That, that, that is enough said. Heat Nation, it's your boy Ernest Bubble Bubble back with another Miami Heat Talk video. But today we're at a special episode because today is Halloween, and as you know, your boy is a professional wrestler. So today had to dress up as one of the icons, the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Ooh yeah, dig it. <laughs> What's going on, Heat Nation? Hope everyone's having an amazing day so far. Hope you have some great plans for Halloween, whether it's trick-or-treating, hanging out with friends, or just living your life. Hope you're having a good one. Now, let's rock and roll on another Miami Heat Talk adventure. How to do something funny, you guys. How to do something a little different because yesterday sucked. There's no other way to put it. Yesterday's game was trash by the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat lose 116 to 107 to the New York Knicks, and it was definitely an embarrassing game. And the embarrassment part about it is again, the Miami Heat flop in the third quarter. I don't understand what's going on. The first half, the Miami Heat were sitting pretty. They started with an eight and two run in the third quarter to lead by 14 points, and then begin to drop the damn ball. The Heat were outscored 35-22 to 22 in the third quarter. The only quarter where they were dominated by. They led in the first, tied in the second. They, were, they only scored under like less than two points in the Knicks in the fourth quarter. It was the third quarter again that loses the Miami Heat this basketball game. Didn't only happen against the Knicks, happened against the Magic. It even happened against the Hornets and it happened also against the Pistons. In the third quarter, I don't know what it is, but this Miami Heat continues to drop the ball. And it's not like they're not taking good shots. They're just missing shots. They're not hustling. They're not playing. I don't know what it is. I don't know if on halftime, like, they're on their phones or they're just eating crap or they're just, like, chilling and thinking it's going to be okay. I don't get it. I wish I had an answer for you guys, but I don't. Now, Y'all know here at Miami Heat Talk, I always try to put a positive spin on stuff. So, got to give a shout out to the man Tyler Hero. Last night, has an amazing game. Goes 12 for 20, 34 points, uh, 5 rebounds, 7 assists. You know, this is exactly what you want to see from Tyler Hero. You want to see Tyler Hero step up and take the reins. He had 20 points in the first half, 14 points in the second half. You know, he's showing that offensively, he is that guy. But the problem was, everybody else besides Tyler Hero dropped the ball. Terry Rozier ends up with 16 points, scores 10 of them in the fourth quarter. T. Rowe was stepping up. He was, he was taking that level, helping us in the fourth quarter. There were a lot of times where the Miami Heat could have came back and won this game in the fourth quarter. The problem was, Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, again, forget how to play basketball. Jimmy Butler finishes with 15 points, 6 of 9 shooting, 0 for 2 for the 3 point live in 37 minutes. Bam Adebayo in 33 minutes, 11 points, 4 rebounds. I know I look ridiculous not right now, but that is way more ridiculous. 11 points and 4 rebounds. Ugh. You get 10 points and 6 rebounds from Nikola Jovic. Bam Adebayo, you know who's your max player. And Nikola Jovic, who's still on a rookie scale contract, has a better game than your max player. And I don't understand that. And the main reason why, you guys, Bam goes 3 for 7 for the field. 3 for 7 for the field. You are a max player taking 3 attempts. And that's not only been this game, you guys. That's pretty much been the whole season. Now, give credit where credit's due. Um, everybody in the starting lineup gets double figures. Fine. But it's not enough to win this game. 107 points in today's NBA? Trash. We heard all about this new Miami Heat offense this offseason. We heard all about Bam Adebayo taking more three-point shots this year. We heard all about that this new offensive system is going to score a lot more points for the Miami Heat. I ain't seeing that. 
What I'm seeing this season is the same crap that we saw last year. A mid-team that'll win one game, lose one game, win one game, lose one game. There's no consistency. And you know what, you guys? I know it's early in the season, and I know we're only four games in, but the way that the Miami Heat are playing basketball right now, we're destined for another play-in trip. Now, look, we're 2-2, two and two, you know, mid. But last night, you needed that win. It's like I said on yesterday's episode, you guys. It was an important game to win because you defeat the New York Knicks now you're defeating a team, even though they were one and two, you still defeat a team that is deemed a contender. You go three and one. Now you're blocking out all the outside noise. Now you're competing with Boston, Cleveland, and Orlando for the best records. But you lose. Horribly, might I add. Carl Anthony Towns gives you 41 points. Bullies you down low. I don't understand why the Miami Heat continue to put Thomas Bryan out there. Now look, Thomas Bryant in 15 minutes, six points, three rebounds, two for three from the field. He hits two three-point shots. He takes a really nasty fall. And when that happened, I thought, okay, we might see Kalel Ware out there. Remember, like I've mentioned before, you guys, you're not going to see Ware play until Love and Thomas Bryant probably can't play. And I thought that was going to happen last night. But Eric Spolster continues to choose not to play Ware. And I get it. And I say this in every video, he's young, he's raw, he still needs time to develop. But how the hell are you going to get your first round draft pick more experience if you don't play him in games? I understand that Coach Spo is the best coach in the NBA, but this is just a horrible decision in my opinion. But hey, what do I know? I'm not the coach of this team. But I will say this, you guys. Two days ago, I posted a video about Bam on a bio, thinking that all of this terrible offensive play was because Bam was taking the Draymond Green approach. Because if you look at his numbers, you guys, he was averaging close to nine rebounds a game, 1.5 steals, 1.5 blocks, four assists a game. Yeah, he's only averaging 11 points a game, but that's because you have Terry Rozier, Tyler Hero, and Jimmy Butler all adding on the offensive end. You also have Jaime Jaquez and Nikola Jovic adding on the offensive end as well. There's only one basketball to spread around. So I thought Bam Adebayo was sacrificing himself for this team. But in 33 minutes, four rebounds? Four rebounds in 33 minutes? Nah, nah, nah. This ain't right, you guys. If you guys want me to be honest, I think we're done with the experience of Bam Adebayo at center. I think Eric Spolstra needs to make a drastic change to this lineup. It is time for Kalel Ware to get more minutes. I can't see any other way to upgrade this roster. Because when you have Carl Anthony Towns bullying you in the paint, getting 43 points, and in constant years, we have seen that Bam Adebayo may not be the answer at center, that we are lacking size, maybe it's time to think of a lineup change. I understand that Kalel Ware may make rookie mistakes. I understand that he may not be 100% ready, but he brings you something that nobody in this team can give you. A defensive presence down low and freaking rebounding. Yesterday, Tyler Hero and Terry Rozier, your backcourt, your guards, lead you in rebounds. That's embarrassing. Tyler Hero and Terry Rozier with, te with seven rebounds to lead this team. Nikola Jovic with six rebounds. Bam on a bio with four! Oh my God. Like, this is embarrassing, you guys. This is incredibly embarrassing. I'm a big fan of Bam on a bio. I'm a big supporter of this Miami Heat team. But if you're telling me that your two stars, your two max players, combined for 26 points and eight rebounds... Not one player, both. 26 points and eight rebounds, your two maximum contract level players. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing and that tells me a change must be done. And I'm not talking about a change as a trade. I'm talking about try something different, bro. Try a different lineup, try a different scheme. Thomas Bryan is not working as the backup center. I understand that some people in my comments are saying that Thomas Bryant is not the reason why we're losing this, these games. He ain't the reason why we're winning either. When Bam Adebayo's not out there, 
giving his defensive presence, that is very easy for teams to drive down the lane and score. Because Thomas Bryant defending the paint, there is no defending the paint with Thomas Bryant out there. He's okay. That's what I'm saying. He's okay. He's a third, fourth string center. He's okay. But you have a guy sitting in the bench that could potentially be a breakout star. You saw what he did in summer league. You saw how he held himself in preseason. Why wouldn't you give him 10 to 15 minutes to prove himself? I'm frustrated. I'm annoyed. And what I'm seeing, I know is not working. But at the end of the day, you guys, I'm a huge Heat supporter. I love this team. And I still think we have a chance. That's why I'm so frustrated. Because I'll be real with you guys. I'll keep it 100. If I thought this team sucked ass, if I thought this team was not good enough to win a championship this season, I would call to trade Jimmy Butler, trade Duncan Robinson, try to get draft capital, and build on our young guys like Pelé, Larson, Kalel Ware, Jaime Jaquez, Nikola Jovic. Screw it. If I thought this team was ass, blow this team up this season, trade your max level contract players except for Bam. You know, I, even though I know, even though I see Bam's having a terrible season, I know that one of the reasons why Bam is not doing as great as he could potentially be is because he's taking a step back and allowing other players to play. How do I know that? Seven damn attempts from the field. That's not Bam Adebayo's game. And even Eric Reed said it yesterday. Eric Reed, the great Miami Heat announcer, said that Eric Spolstra has to think of a different offense. You got to get Bam Adebayo the ball in the top of the key and let him create. Terry Rozier and Tyler Hero have been the focal offensive points, but you need Bam. You need to get Bam Adebayo going. Jimmy will figure it out. Jimmy Butler is good enough to figure it out. But to be honest with you guys, if Bam Adebayo had a much better game, we wouldn't be complaining. You got to get Bam going. But my opinion, from what I've seen there's these first four games, you got to make a change. I don't think bringing Kevin Love back is going to be the necessary necessary answer. You need to play the guy that you drafted 15th. Give him a shot. See what he does. If he flops, he flops. But at least we'll know. So Heat Nation, I want to hear from you. Do you think Kalel Ware can possibly be the answer to help this team moving forward? Or do you think no matter what we do, we are destined to be a play-in team again? Let me know what you think in the comments, you guys. Tell me what you think about the Macho Man outfit. Got to throw some positivity out there and make you guys smile. Hope it helped because I know last night sucked, so we all need a laugh. Don't forget to like the video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel, you guys. We are very close to 5,000 subscribers. If you get me to 5,000 subscribers tomorrow, I'll do a $50 giveaway in a live video. Thank you guys so much, and until next time, your boy Ernest out, and that is enough said. Yeah, buddy. Ooh, yeah, dig it.